Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to be covering the relative paths for anchor tags. And just a quick note, anchor tags are not the only tag that uses paths, such as relative and absolute paths. Um, image tags and many other tags inside of HTML use these paths. So it's kind of something you can't avoid. You need to wrap your head around eventually. So I've got myself here a link that uses an absolute path. And I'm going to create another tag right here below this one. And this one is going to use a relative path. So right now I'm just going to do a pound sign. And I'll say a relative link here. And we'll close that anchor tag. And let's save and refresh and make sure this is working fine on our browser. And right off the bat, you should notice something about the anchor tag. You should be able to tell me if it's block or inline. And obviously it's an inline tag because they're not stacking on top of each other, they're stacking left and right. So the anchor tag is an inline tag. So there's my relative link. Obviously it doesn't go anywhere because I just put the pound sign. So in order to illustrate a relative link, we actually have to have another file, another file to link to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another HTML file so that we can link to this. So we're going to create maybe page two of our website. So in order to do that simply, I'm just going to highlight all of this web code and copy it, control C or command C, and create a new document. So I'm going to do file new. And I'm just going to paste all that. So command V to paste all that code. So there's all the source code. Now it's appearing all white in my particular um, text editor because I haven't saved it yet. So as soon as I save this as an HTML file, it will apply the syntax highlighting. So I'm going to save this file as um, page-2.html. I'm just going to save it to my desktop, same place my other file is. So I'll click Save there. And let's come back to my desktop just so you can see. I have now page 1 and page 2 side by side. And I want to create a link from page 1 to page 2. So I need to make page 2, which I have open right now, a little bit different. So I'll change the title. I'll say this is page 2. And I'm going to delete these links. And I'll just put a header 1 that says this is page 2. And I'll close that header 1. Okay, now I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to come back to my desktop and load up page 2 inside of my web browser. So I'll right click it, say open with Safari. And I can see here's page two, this is page one. And what I want to happen is when I click on this link, it should take me to this page. So I'm going to close both of these down and jump back to my uh, text editor to make that link happen. Now we're going to use a relative link. So I need to open back up my page, uh, my initial, my index page. So I'm going to say file open and I'll select that index file and open that one up. So here's my index file, and I need to fix the link. So make sure you're editing your index file. And the link to get to my relative page is just simply the page name in this instance. So it's going to be page-2.html. Okay, so let's save that and come back to our web browser. And let's, uh, let's open up our index page in our web browser if you don't already have it opened up. And let's try the link. So when I click this link now, Sure enough, it loaded up page two. So that link is working. I can click back and try that link again. And that's a relative link. So I linked directly to a page. Now, I only had to reference the name of the file because these two files are in the same location. They're both on my desktop. Now, if, if this is not the case, then relative paths change a little bit. So I'm going to demonstrate how this works with a quick example here. So I'm going to create a new folder. And I'll just call this uh, my site. And I'm going to place um, this page two inside of my site folder. So again, this is on the desktop. I have my site. And now that page is inside of a folder. Now, if I just go back to my website and or back to this index page and try that link now, I'm going to get an error, page not found, which means this file no longer, it doesn't know. It's not on the desktop anymore. So this link, this relative path is broken. So whenever you reference forward or you're going into folders, you need to put the folder name first. So I would have to say um, my site slash, whoops, I can't have that forward slash. That won't work on a local site. So I have to have the name of the folder, then a slash, then the name of the file. So what this is saying is 
go into the folder, then, whoops, I accidentally deleted that, then reference the file. So let's save and refresh now. So I'm gonna go back, reload the page, make sure you reload, and let's try this link again. And now it actually loads that page back up. And you can look up here and look at the URL and your address bar. It's going into my site and then to page two. So that works just fine. But if again, if I was to take this and move it back to the desktop, that link would be broken. I would need to go in and fix that. So to reference forward or inside of fo folders going forward, you just do the directory name followed by the page. Now, just to add a little bit more complication to this. So let's say that I have another folder inside of my site. So I'll just say another. And then let's say this page exists inside of that folder. So I have my index on my desktop, my site, and then in fact, if we pull these side by side, it'll make a little more sense. And then another, and then page two. So to do that, it's just the same. First, I have to go into my site. Then I have to go into another, then page two. So this would be the correct path for that. You always start with wherever the file you're working on, in this case, index.html is located. So index.html is located on the desktop, so that's where I start. I need to go into my site, into another, and then reference the page. So that's how that is. Now, if this index.html page was inside of the My Site folder, or in other words, right here, I wouldn't need to go into my site because I would already be there. I would just simply need to say another slash page2.html. So that's how relative paths work going forward. Now it's a little bit different when relative paths go backward. And I'll show you the syntax for that in this example. So in order to make this work, we need to come back to our desktop and let's say I wanna create a link on my page2.html page that takes me back to the home page. So I'm gonna right click this and say open with, and we'll open back up our text editor. And let's create an anchor tag. So A, and then the property and value of href equals, I'll put a pound sign for now. And I'll say for the anchor text, take me back home and close the anchor tag. Save, and let's open this page up in our browser to make sure that link is there. So when I click this, I want it to go back to the home page. Now, because this is folder is inside several folders, I don't need to go forward, meaning right. I need to go backward, meaning left. So I need to go back to another, then back to my site, then back to the desktop, and that's where that file is located. So again, relative paths are like directions. The directions have changed because they're always relative to the file you're currently working on. And in this case, I'm currently working on page two. So how do I get to the index from page two? Well, I have to go backwards several folders to get to it. And to go backwards in HTML or in path syntax, it's dot, dot, slash. What that does is that takes me back one directory. So if I was just to say dot, dot, slash, that would take me from the spot I currently am back a directory. So it would take me back. And then if I was to do another dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, that takes me back one more directory. So I'm currently inside of another. So dot dot slash takes me back to my site and then dot dot slash takes me back to the desktop. Now, once I'm on the desktop, this would place me on the desktop. I simply reference the file I'm after, which in this case is index.html. So I'll save that and let's go back and refresh this. And let's try this link now. So this should take me back to index, and it actually does. It works. I'm back to index. This should take me, oh, this, this link is broken. So I've, I haven't updated that link yet. So I need to come back and fix the, uh, the link for the index page because I moved this inside of a folder called another, and I didn't update that. So let's go, let's see, we need to open up the index page. Whoops, not in a browser. We need to say open with and open it in our text editor. So again, this one goes through my site, another page two. Actually, that looks correct. Let's see what's wrong. I'm not sure. Let's try that link again. Maybe I didn't refresh. That worked. That takes us back. Oh, I just had not refreshed. So it is in fact correct. So now I can go to page two. I can go back to page one for the index page and back and forth. So 
that's a quick primer on relative and absolute paths. Again, this topic seems to quite um, confuse people when they're starting out, um, especially the relative paths, how to go forward and then the syntax to go backwards if you need to, like we did in our, our other page. So um, there'll be a few links in the resources to where you can study additional topics on relative and absolute paths, but that's how you use them in conjunction with links to link to sites other than your own like Google or to link to sites that are your own sites, for example, your own additional web pages. So that's, uh, that's it for the relative and absolute paths, and we'll see you in the next video.